here, and Horton and the whole police force are downstairs waiting for him. No, Sid. They got him cornered. He can't get out except by the front door. He's not going to stay there forever. No, Sid, no. All those lights and all those people and Frankie won't come to the party. Maybe shy. Oh, no, don't let that face fool you. Frankie's a very dangerous little boy. A dirty little boy with a gun. Who's down there now? Van's covering the police operations and Phil's down with the cameras. Good. Now that I know the city's safe and the paper's safe and the story's safe, may I go home? Oh. I've had a long day. I've covered the dog show and the Woman's League for Civic Improvement today. I'm ready for a little rest. This is very nice. I hope it sells a lot of papers for you. Thank you. It's full of male goring glory and there's obviously no place for a growing girl. Oh, Terry, wait a minute. Oh, no. There's a girl, Terry. No. Up in the room with him. Oh, no. We don't know what her name is. We don't know what she looks like. We don't know anything about her. Yeah? Oh, hello, Ben. What do you got? Oh. He says it looks like an all-night session. Maybe we'll have a little time to play around. You're getting what? Well, if you're getting a cold, I'll send you down some aspirin. Yeah, Terry will bring them. Now, you stick with it, you hear me? Okay. Terry. About the girl. Peaceably. Come out without your guns. Repeat, without your guns. This is your only chance. Farrell. Farrell. Come out peaceably. Come out without your guns. Repeat, without your guns. This is your only chance. The only thing that's going to happen is I'm going to end up with laryngitis. I've been making that same call for the last hour. Make it again in five minutes. Inspector Horton? Yeah. I'm Terry Hagen, the Herald. Nothing new. He's up there. He won't answer. He won't come out. We've cleared the house. Now we're waiting for him to make a move. You're going in after him? Suppose you had a guy holed up there. A gun-crazy kid with his finger on a filed trigger, waiting for the door to open. You could send your men in and let them take their chances. Or you could wake him out. It's a sure thing if you wait. What would you do? I'd wait. I'm waiting. What about the girl? What girl? There is a girl up there with him, isn't there? Yeah. Who is she? A girl. What's her name? They got her name down at headquarters. Is she in on this? She's up there, isn't she? I mean, finding Farrell. Did she turn him in? Did you promise her anything? Protection? Money? She didn't dip us off. She's not getting any money. Look, Farrell's got friends. You put a story like that in the paper and she'd get just what he's gonna get. No. You've been looking for Farrell for months. Nothing happened. You couldn't get anywhere near him. Suddenly you find out where he's hiding. Only it isn't just Farrell. It's Farrell and the girl. And you say the girl had nothing to do with it. I didn't say that. What did you say, Inspector? I said there's a girl up there with him. Who is she? Farrell's a big noise, isn't he? What difference does a girl make? Call her the unknown blonde. What more do you want? Want to know more about the girl? I've lived in this house for six years, and I never dreamt that anything like this would happen. They knocked at the door and threw us out. I never saw that man. I never even knew he was in the house. I never saw him at all. This city is in a fine state of affairs when respectable people haven't got a chance. Oh, well, he rented the place from me uh, six, seven months ago. Nice-looking feller. Said he was selling hardware up around New England. Paid good, too. Even pay in advance when he said he was going to be away. But I never seen no woman around there. Didn't even know he was married. Or whatever he is. I see. Me and Henny were playing stoop ball on Henny's stoop. He was down the block and they came by. I know the guy and Henny gets the point that comes out of liners. And it hits his hat and almost knocks it off. And boy, he was so mad he grabs the ball and he grabs Henny. But the girl laughs and she wouldn't let him do anything. She even gave Henny back the ball. She was real nice. She was real pretty. Oh, come on, Eddie. I want to know more about the girl. The unknown blonde, the Farrell's girl. Maybe they had a fight. Maybe she turned him in for the reward money. But maybe she didn't. The pieces don't fit. She hasn't even been around. No one's ever seen her except a kid who thought she was real nice and real pretty. Who is she? How does she fit in? Horton told me how to file on her down here. What? 
Well, almost. I don't think he likes newspaper reporters. Maybe he just doesn't like girls. That isn't one of your troubles, is it, Eddie? What do you want to know? What's her name? Barry Connor. Where's she from? She's a kid. Lives with her mother down in Farrell's old neighborhood. How does she fit in on this? Well, a couple of years ago, when Farrell started to be somebody, the old lady showed up. Said that Farrell was making passes with the kid. Well, what could we do? You can't put a guy in jail for trying. Did you check on her? Not then. We figured she was just like all the rest. Farrell had a dozen bangs. But things started to get hot two or three months later. We I don't know to go by the book, Terry. Where'd you say she was? Maybe she's been too quiet, too good. Never any real notion of the evil in The streets are all they have. How long has she known him? He was always around. I think I'm going crazy. How the time. About me? I keep telling Ma I know you. Is there anything? Mrs. Connor, I want you to write to do. How will it get to her? She'll get it. Darling. Mary. No way to get the letter to her. Farrell won't let us. You wouldn't believe it if we put it on the PA system. You shoot any of my men that go up the stairs. What are you going to do? Just what we've been doing, wait him out. And the girl? What's going to happen to her when you have to go in after Farrell? Yeah. Yes. Let me take this up myself. Huh? Stop making bad jokes. I'm not joking. I cleared the house. I'm not letting you to do. He's likely to kill her. And maybe you will when you go in after him. He's not just going to walk out. What happens to the girl when everybody gets tired of waiting? She's got to take her chances. She hasn't got a chance. How would you do it? Get on your loudspeakers. Tell Farrell I'm coming in alone. Tell him it's about the girl. Won't work. Do you know anything else that will? He's been up there five hours. He's scared, he's jumpy, he's nervous, and he's got a gun. You want to walk into a thing like that? I've seen him laid out in a slab at the morgue for a lot less reason. You won't shoot me. I'm just a girl with a pencil. Why do you want to do it? You don't believe all that stuff on your press pass. No. What then? Looking for medals? Yes, I collect them. Who else is there? Yeah, I see what you mean. All right, go ahead. Give it a try. You got a lot of guts. All right, Charlie. Farrell! Farrell! There's a lady coming up to see you. She is unarmed. Repeat, she is unarmed. She has a message for Mary Corner. We are giving her ten minutes. Ten minutes. Farrell. There's a lady coming up to see you. She is unarmed. Repeat. She is unarmed. Ten minutes. be dead up there. Shall I hit the speakers again? No. She's been up there ten minutes. Yeah, I know. You had the glass on it all the time? See anything through the window? Capel and Ratner are on a roof across the street. They haven't taken their eyes off that window. What do you think? I don't know. 
Farrell's a gun-crazy kid. He might try to keep both of them up there. Yeah, he might. Why'd you let her go? You got any kids, Charlie? Yeah, two. Any girls? One of them. How old? Seventeen. The girl up there is seventeen. I think you should come home now. What you are doing is wrong, Mary. You cannot help this man. It is too late. You can only hurt yourself and everybody who loves you. I pray for you and I pray that you will be safe. I will do anything to help you, but there's nothing I can do now except to pray and to hope that you will read this letter and do what it says. Your loving mother. Well, Farrell? Well, what? Will you let her go? I ain't heard her say she wants to. I'm talking to you first. How do I know it ain't a trick? A trick? Look, I'm not the cops. I don't know all their tricks. All I know is you come up here with a letter. How do I know it ain't from Horton? Or those guys waiting on the roof across the street. Mary, look at the letter. Do you know the writing? Yes. Yes, it's Ma. She writes so pretty. She was always proud she writes so nice. Did you hear that? Yeah, I heard it. You can't keep her here forever, Farrell. She hardly knows what's happening now. She'll snap inside if you don't let her go. She's all right. You know that isn't true. There's nothing wrong with her, I tell you. All right, even if there isn't. What's going to happen to her? Nothing. You can't stay here forever. You'll have to get out sometime, with your guns or without them. Now or tonight or tomorrow, sometime. Are you going to make her walk out with you? We were going to buy a new dress. Frank said I could have a new dress. There was a blue dress. I liked the blue dress. It was such a pretty dress. We're going to buy it. Let her go, Farrell. I ain't sure I want to. I wanted a new dress to get married in. Frank said I could. Frank said I could have anything I wanted. I didn't want anything else. Only the dress. I'm going to take it down. Come on, Mary. We're going home now. Come on. There. Where do you think you're going? You can't use her now, Farrell. You don't even want her anymore. She's just in the way. She's no good to you at all. With so many dresses. All kinds. All colors. the blue dress. We were going to go back and get the blue dress. It was such a pretty dress. What do you make it, Charlie? 17 minutes, give or take a little. Got the tear gas? Yes, sir. Think you could hit the window? I could lay it in his lap. All right, all right. If he doesn't answer, give it to him. Yes, sir. You clear with the men in the room? They'll cover all the way. All right. Tell them if the girls don't show in two minutes, we'll give them tear gas. Farrell. Farrell. Here she comes! for the 10 o'clock. We're set up for the first run. 
Turned in a nice job, Terry. Thanks. Where's the girl? Home. You stay with her. The story holds she might turn an honest dollar. I was jealous of a Tommy gun by Mary Connor. Life with a Luger. His kisses tasted like lead. I married a mouse. Cut it out, Sid. Hey. He really got to you, didn't he? Oh, now you watch out. It's an occupational disease. If you're not careful, you might get to like people. Seventeen. That's all she is. When I was 17, I thought a big, dumb football player I knew was the most wonderful male in the world. You can't get hurt much by a football player. When it was all over, I just didn't get any more free tickets to the games. But what's going to happen to this girl? Love isn't as fatal as bullets. She'll get over it. Come on, I'll buy you a coffee. There aren't any rules, are there, Sid? She'd like this Mary Connor. Hurt so bad, she hardly knew what was happening to her. I almost had to carry her down those three flights of stairs. I couldn't wait to get to the door. It looked like heaven to me. And right there, right at the knob, she pulled back. Scared, half-dazed, a gun-crazy fool somewhere behind us. She froze at the door. She kept staring out at all the lights. Do you know what she wanted? She wanted to know if she looked all right. Well, come on, that coffee won't wait forever. The joint starts filling up with the morning crowd about this time. Does it? Mm-hmm. Do I look all right? 